Oh Jesus. We say receive it this morning. Receive our sacrifice of thanksgiving this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray Holy Ghost that you speak through me this morning. I refuse to speak my mind. Minister to me as I minister to your people. Anoint my lips that I rightly divide the word of truth. Make your word so simple, Lord, that everyone hearing me will understand. And yet make it eternal, that it will be impossible for us to forget. We give you all the glory this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats in high places, far above principalities, where the devil cannot come up to. You see, when, when it comes to thanksgiving, it is so important that Jesus, at a point in time, when he healed 10 people, and then one only one came back to say thank you. He did not take it like that. Oh, kitwa eh kitwa bien so. Semasa do na ba kwa ba is okay. So if I have healed ten and one comes is all. He said where are the rest? O se na enkrona ka no omo won. So if you are here and your thanksgiving has not yet come. So who wanna say wa se da aforian enya ma ya. Then Jesus is asking where are you? Hallelujah. Amen. So make sure you give him your thanksgiving this morning. Amen. Amen. How many people fasted this week? I'm not talking of one day, two days, the whole week. I'm not talking of six to twelve, the whole day. Oh, I, I can see the hand too. <laughs> the hands are vanishing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes, you know, we do some things and I wonder if we are truly coming from Ghana. <laughs> or it's a system that changes us. Because when we were in Ghana, when we say fasting, it's not what we do here. And some of us have fasted so much in Ghana. But as soon as we get here, this changes. Hallelujah. Amen. The place shouldn't change you. Yes, you have to change yeah, where you go to. When I was, I was in San Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God will help us. Because anytime we have programs or things like this going on at church. You see, the other day, uh, Sister Doreen, your mom said something here. She said that when things like this come up in the church, we have to take it personal. You have to take it that this thing that is being you know, organized is for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if you come to church and instructions are given, you see, these things are not people, you know, like we, they did not just sit and say that, oh, let's, it's, it's, it's been a long time we fast, let's fast. It is a spiritual direction. Maybe God wants to do something for you. But when something like this goes on, you don't put yourself in. If instructions come out from the pulpit, you don't participate. When you are like this, I don't know what you come here to do. Hallelujah. Amen. You shouldn't let circumstances block your chances with God. Some of us, the whole year, if you don't take care, the whole year will come and you never fasted one day. And you, and you are a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. The other day I made some scenario here, something that God showed me about Christians and our prayer life. Maybe that, to help somebody. You see, uh, when you are eating fruit back home, uh, we have two types of eating fruits. Because of the house flies. When you're eating fruits, some people do this the whole time they're eating the fruit. To keep the flies away from the fruit until they finish. And then, there are those who also will stay calm, be eating the fruit. And then once in a while they do this. And then they stop. The first one is the best way to eat the fruits in Ghana because of the flies. Because you are not doing it so strong, but you are doing it this way every day, you know, the whole time. So the fly cannot come into your onto your fruit. 
But the, those that do this very hard, and then they stop, and then they do it hard again. When you stop, the fly will come and land on your fruit. The believer who only fast once, there's a program at church. Is the person was here, you are eating the fruit, you do this, ah, then you stop. And then you come back and do it again. It doesn't matter, he will come back again. You see, God did not give us the power to kill the devil. He gave us the power to bind him. So you can only suck him. You can't kill him. Labana, he's dead. The way they are killing him in Ghana, Labana, he should be dead. But, so if you understand it this way, it means that your prayer life should be constant. You shouldn't be doing this and then stop, doing this and stop. It doesn't help. I pray that God will help us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My mission here this morning is to lead the church to Thanksgiving. And everything going on from the start until now has been going in that direction. And so it has made my work so easy, like I said. Our, our scripture we are standing on is in Psalm 105. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, when I was giving you know, the, the, the schedule that I'm on program today. I was thinking through, God, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want the church to hear? And right from, you know, the day I was told to Wednesday, still my mind was so blank. Until I came to church on uh, Wednesday. And whilst pastor was speaking, it's like the light bulb went on. Uh, those who, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I stood up, went to the control room, got a paper and a pen. And then I started writing what God was showing me. Hallelujah. And so just as I have received, that is what I'm bringing to you this morning. And what God showed me was, you know, the whole program from Monday until now. God linked the whole thing to from creation to the state of the church right now. From Monday to now, the program went through all the way up to now. It is like from creation to the status of Christianity right now. And I was surprised what I, what I discovered. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of time, let me just start. On Monday, we talked about total worship to the Creator, to the God who created us in His likeness. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we talk about total worship, it is the perfect example of total worship is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I said here last time, when we talk of worship, it is not only the songs and the music we play. And I said, Instruments now. That is worship when it comes to um, Christianity. When you are sorry, it's about a Christopher. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, put our hands together for him. You see, when we talk about worship, it is not only the songs we sing and the musical instruments we play. Last time I said here, that during creation or before creation cry, when God thought about, you know, God, God doesn't need worship. He deserves worship. Everything we give to God is something he deserves. You see, in the, in the, in the tree language, we said, if, if, if the thing is good, you don't need to sell it. It sells itself. And so when God needed or God wanted something to praise him with instruments and then songs, the person that came to mind was Lucifer. Don't get it wrong. 
God did not create mankind to worship him. It was Lucifer. And in the belly of Lucifer is all these musical instruments. Sometimes I just want to have a glimpse of how this guy can sing with all the instruments in his belly. Blend all the guitars and the keyboard. One man no. So if, 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 if like we human beings can blend these things and create such a wonderful sound, can you imagine how an angel can do this? Singing and glorifying God every single day. Now, then God created the earth and the heavens. And when he finished everything and it was so beautiful, and then he thought of somebody to rule, somebody to take dominion of the earth then he thought of you and then he thought of me hallelujah Amen. so we were created to rule on earth and God gave everything he created to mankind so total worship in the garden of Eden is Adam and Eve who are gods themselves like you know David said ye are gods who are rulers on earth they have dominion over everything God created and apart from having all this power to themselves they still acknowledge the supremacy of God they accept that there is a supreme being somewhere that even though I am God in this earth I have to live by his will. This is worship. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the worship God created in heaven. I mean, uh, in the garden of Eden. And so things went wrong. This is how it began. And most of the time, you have to go back. When they came to question Jesus about marriage and all those things, he asked them, have you two read from the beginning? In the beginning, Hallelujah. Amen. And so when God opened my eyes on Wednesday morning here and I saw the series and the trend of our program the whole week, my heart was just filled with joy. Sometimes when revelation comes like that, you just smile and I, I, I don't know how to explain that feeling. Hallelujah. Amen. So on Monday, we talked about total worship to the God who created us in his likeness and image. So he created us in his likeness. His likeness is rulership. His likeness is taking dominion over your territory. And that is how he made us. Hallelujah. Amen. So we were made to dominate the earth. Just like you are here this morning. You have power on your own body. You can choose to do whatever you want to do. You can decide not to come to church. You can decide not to obey anything God says. But even after having all that power and dominion over your own body, you still live according to the will of God. That is your worship. Hallelujah. If worship is in songs, then some of us will not be worshippers. But my voice is not a music voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so you need to understand that apart from having the power you have and the dominion over your own body choosing to live according to the will of God is your worship. That is how it began in the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we come to Tuesday. We talked about repentance from the unlikeness of God. We all saw what happened in the Garden of Eden. Man fell. And we lost the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So after the fall, you see, Redemption actually started in the Garden of Eden. When man fall in the Garden of Eden, God started a redemption right there. I think there are like five covenants in the scriptures. We have the Adamic covenant, Abrahamic covenant, Davidic covenant, and then Mosaic covenant, and then the New Testament covenant. Now, all these covenants were sealed. The only one that was not sealed was the Adamic covenant. 
What was supposed to seal that covenant was the tree of life. So if you read the scriptures carefully in Genesis, as soon as they ate the forbidden fruit, God sent cherubims to go and guard that tree. Because had they had access to that tree, our redemption would be impossible. Hallelujah. Amen. And so God being so loving, even though we were sinners, at that time, he thought of saving us. And so he guarded the, the tree so that Adam and Eve would not have access to it. And then he sent them away. That is what guaranteed our, our, our salvation today. If they had taken that fruit, they wouldn't have died. Amen. Amen. The, the um, Mosaic covenant was sealed with the law. It got sealed. The Davidic covenant was sealed with music. Hallelujah. Amen. And then which one has that mentioned? Abraham covenant. Abraham that was also sealed with circumcision. So the only one, and then the, the New Testament one. That is with Jesus. He came to seal it with his own blood. Oh, hallelujah. And so it was only the Adamic one that was not sealed. Because God wants to redeem you this morning. Hallelujah. And so if you are here to thank God, you need to understand what you are doing this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Wednesday, I don't know if you are seeing the trend I saw here. And I don't know when they were drawing the program, they had this in mind. But this is what God told me about the whole thing. On Wednesday, we talk about restoration to the likeness of God. Amen. Amen. So after repentance, he brought us back to our relationship with him. Our spirits became alive again. Hallelujah. Amen. So repentance made the way. When you repent, when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's open, let's read our scriptures. Psalm 103. We'll read from the verse 1 to verse 5. I'm, I'm sorry. Is it 103 or 105? Oh, 103, I'm sorry, yes. 103, verse 1 to 5. And son, you move back, you see a numeral. Was it me crash your roddy? No, me more didn't you know, ain't shiny didn't crown crown. Me crash your roddy. Now, am I going to infringe the new year? A pat in you know. Oh no, and I what they want from so in your eye if you war. Now, what's our yard when you know what you won't cry if I'm in them or the adore any more bro who knew a boa butre or the and the pa a show of no ma na umran tebre a yafu fro so called ye. Hallelujah. Amen. We will read eight to forty, but let me read this one first. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who healed all your diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And then we go to verse 8 to 14, the same chapter. In the it could see a do nine. No, my bro, home for and what don't for and you're ready. The butcher of food, then I don't hear a door so. Oh, ham and consider pim. Now, when I am rasa poor and consider. Oh, so see, I'm born in so and ye in me. Now, what shall I am from so and shall I am more? Now, set also worry as in as I say no. Set my door yes so. I will one year who throw no as so any no. Sa a poya nya toya en tem ware no. Sa wama ye any emra tu en tem aware eneno. Sa a ja yem eshe sheno emma emma ne mahono. Sa a radi e yem e yen wo. Wana usro no ho eneno. Na unimi yen su. O kaisa ye yem futro. 
or the sunny dear Nina at his eyes, sorry. Why are from the Yuramu in Shrey? Amen. Amen. We are thanking the God that forgives all our iniquities. My prayer is that if you are here and you've been asking for forgiveness from God, the simple answer is that God has forgiven you. Don't let the devil deceive you that what you have done is too big to be forgiven. Don't let him make you understand that what you have done is beyond the death of Christ. I pray that he will help you understand that he has forgiven you. And the Bible says that the God who heals all our diseases, he doesn't heal some of the diseases. Some of them are not beyond his power. He heals all of them. My prayer that he heals our diseases this morning. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray that he heals our diseases this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you look at the prodigal son, this is a story that Jesus himself gave. And Jesus is coming from heaven. So when he's giving us things like this, he's telling us the mind of the father. So when you go wayward, it doesn't mean that God has for, you know, forgot about you. If you decide to come back, he will embrace you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that even though the child was far away, far off, the father saw him from afar and called him to come that come I will receive you and he did not only receive him you know the son came to be a slave because of what he has done to the father but the father received him and restored him back to where he was hallelujah Amen. so we are talking about restoration to the likeness of God the state we lost in the garden of Eden. When we come to God, he restores us back. You get everything you used to have. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let the devil deceive you. And then from there, we move on to planning in the likeness of God. After he restored us, our spirits became alive. He gave us the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the other that was saying here, he did not make another spirit for us. Oh. The same spirit that he uses to create the earth. That spirit of power that nobody can stand against. That spirit of power that when he arises, everyone else must fall. That spirit of power that when he comes to a place, things will have to be getting, you know, things will be broken. That same spirit that will make Pharaoh see that I cannot challenge this God. He gave us that same spirit. Hallelujah. He did not make another spirit. Oh. His own spirit he gave to us. Free gift. Hallelujah. Amen. And we call him power. The yes, another name for the Holy Ghost is power. So as you are seated there, you are filled with power. To me, I show you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the power of God he gave to us. And so Paul said that if we live in the spirit, then we might as well walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. You are living in the spirit and you are denying walking in the spirit. It doesn't make sense. So walking in the spirit means that you are not walking by sight. You are walking by faith. So every step you take is faith oriented hallelujah amen the spirit of god is in us this morning he's in you to show you the way sometimes you get confused in life you don't know if you have to take a or b but when the spirit is in you everything you plan to do has nothing to do with the carnal mind it is the spirit that inspires you to do hallelujah amen so let's walk in the spirit I heard a story of a church in Ghana. It's a big church now. And when they started the church, they needed a place to, I mean, 
they had two options to buy a land to build the, the house of God. And, and the whole thing was so confusing. Should we choose this side or that side? And then they prayed. They prayed. And then the Holy Ghost showed them the way. Take this side. And when they built the, 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 they built the house there. Now do you know that today, the other side, there's a highway that has been made on that side. So had they gone to the other side, all the investment would be waste. Because they have to, they have to remove, I mean, Amen. Amen. We need the direction of the Holy Ghost. And he is speaking every day. If you don't hear the Holy Ghost speak, then it means that your radio frequency is in a different number. Because like somebody said, the Holy Ghost is a talkative. Things are happening every day. The devil is working things around you. And so he is always directing us. But say a sanibba who no more. But if we descend back into the hill, that is when we don't see him to lead us in everything we do. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are no longer supposed to walk by sight. Amen. Amen. And then Thursday we came to dominion in the likeness of God. So do you remember what I said from the beginning? In the beginning, God gave Adam the dominion over the earth. And then we lost it. But he gave it back to us again. Hallelujah. Amen. So he gave us dominion. You see, this flesh cannot overpower you. If the flesh overpowers you, it is your own choice. Because he has given us the power over this flesh. Sometimes you have to speak to it. Hallelujah. Amen. If, if, if your flesh is being stopped on, speak to it. If your car is being stopped on, speak to the car. Hallelujah. It works. It works. Amen. Amen. You have the power. Hallelujah. If we look at Luke chapter 10 verses 19, he says that, Behold, I give you power over serpents. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we see cockroaches and we are running away. <laughs> I wonder what kind of power we have. <laughs> We, we stand here and we bind demons and, and principalities. Yeah, well, and then we see cockroaches and we are running away. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have the power, church, to bind every enemy that will come against you. And then in 2 Cor uh, Corinthians 10, 11, he says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are power through God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he gave us the dominion. In the name of Jesus. In conclusion, I told you my, my um, the job was already done from the beginning of the service. So a lot of things I plan to say is okay. In conclusion, I want to bring your mind to something that happened a year ago in this room. I think last year by this time, we had a revival like this. This. And I happened to be one of the speakers. It was, and I, I remember I spoke on a Thursday. And that time, the word of God that came to me for the church, I don't know if those who are here will remember. But there are some things that I said here. I said that God said he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And he's going to bring the desire of all men. He's going to burden us with the growth of the church. Like people will wake up and the first thing they remember is church. Once they go to bed, what they remember is church. And God says that he will burden us with the church. Because it has come to a time when everybody is about their own business. And we have left the house of God in shambles. But he said that he's about to shake us one more time. And then I saw it happen. Come December last year. I came to church one day. And I saw the whole place was decorated. The whole, every chair was wearing new dress. Christmas dress. 
They were all beautifully dressed. And then I remember that, uh, during the service, Pastor came to announce to us that it was this family that wanted to bless the church with this thing. When I, when I heard that, my heart jumped. You see, Presiding, I think you were here, you remember? I said that people would take uh, a phone and call Presiding, I want to do this for the church. And, and I said people will even say, oh, we want to pay every every cost in the mission house. Hallelujah. Amen. And then that same time, Amen. I was at the back when one of the gentlemen, he said, ah, the way we come to church and we hang our coats anywhere, I don't really feel good at it at all. I knew what was happening to that brother. It is the second that was happening in his belly. He said, I don't feel okay at all. So he went to buy a coat rack at the back. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the shaking God is bringing to the church. I don't know if yours has come and you are trying to kill the voice. But there is something coming after the shaking. He says that I will bring the desire of all men and then we will all come together and uplift the banner of Christ. And when we do that, he said, I, the Lord, will take pleasure in it. And when I am glorified, then I will visit you. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And we are building the church. I have seen the church move from one place to the other. We have come to hold, everyone is holding their own place. And we are shouting to a boy. And we are uplifting the church. And so we are building the house of God. And God is taking pleasure. He is glorified in what we are doing. And he says that after that, when there is meat in my house, last time we heard about tithes, when we bring meat to the house of God, and there is an overflow in the house of God, that is when he will visit our pockets. Hallelujah. Amen. If you think about the church of God, that is when he will make your, your, your pocket flat. Let me share a personal story with you. You see, when I was in Ghana on campus, my, my, I shared a room with one guy called Simon. And Simon's favorite scripture is Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is that, is that, is that the right scripture? Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And if I tell you that Simon's favorite scripture is Matthew 6.33, this is somebody that will paste this thing all over the room. So on all our walls in the room, Matthew 6.33, at, 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 at the back of all his pamphlets and his notebooks, Matthew 6.33. So when I wake up, the first thing that hits me is Matthew 6.33. When I decide to read some of his books, Matthew 6.33. No, no, when God was speaking to me, but I didn't know. And then I came to the US. Where's my brother Steve? And I was living with him. He's also S, 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 Simon and Steve. Simon's so so favorite scripture is Matthew 6 33. And I remember one day, you know, the whole thing just hit me like that. I said, ah, Matthew 6 I have made that thing here again. So I went quickly and I opened the scriptures. I said, what is going on? I read it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. We need to build the house of God before we will get our pockets to be fat. Some of us are chasing the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I got that whole thing, I said, God, I'm sorry for not listening to you back way. Now I have heard you. You said I have to seek you first. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to see God first. Let me give you an, a, a scenario of what I'm talking about. You see, in this country, if you want uh, paid vacation days, if you want cheap insurance benefits, health insurance, if you want good dental you know, benefits, what do you get? to get all these things. What do you seek first? To get what I just mentioned. 
job. Hallelujah. If you seek a job, these things will all come so easily. You get your paid vacations. You get your health insurance. You get paid every week. But the problem with the church today is that we are chasing after health insurance. We are chasing after dental insurance. We are chasing after paid vacations. When there is a job that will give us all these things. Have you seen how you struggle to make money and still your pocket is still running empty? See God first. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a revelation I'm giving you. This is how God explained the whole thing to me. That we are chasing after the wrong thing. You see, if you go around job, you will get these things all right, but not, not an not on an easy platter. You will get health insurance outside the job, but you will pay with all your money. It will cost you so much. But when you get a job, it comes with it. It is a, it's, it's like a package. Hallelujah. Amen. So seek ye first a job, and ye shall find health benefits, and you will find paid vacations. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God will help us this morning. When I saw this secret, and I put the house of God first, I saw that things were working around it. I don't have to struggle for certain things. It is God that works all these things. Hallelujah. You see, the whole money you get the whole year from your job, do you believe God can give it to you in just a second? Oh, he can just do that and give it to you in a second. So who should you seek first? Hallelujah. Amen. When there's a prayer fasting going on, don't think you will die when you fast. If you miss sleep one day and go to work, you won't die. Oh, hallelujah. Am I speaking to someone? If you miss sleep one day and you come to church, you won't die. If you fast a whole day and you go to work, you won't die. It is a lie from the pit of hell. There are certain things in your life that God can only take away when you fast. You see, when you eat, your body becomes so heavy. And your physical ear becomes so sharp that it blocks the spiritual ear. But when you, when you deny food to this body, it becomes so light in the spirit. And then when it is trying to do certain things, because it is so weak, it can't stand up. And then that is why your spirit becomes so much alive. And then when God speaks, you will hear him. I pray that God will help his church this morning. The devil is working day and night to get you. He doesn't like the fact that you come to church. He doesn't like the fact that you are a Christian. He doesn't like the fact that you are saved. And he's working around the clock. You need to be wise, church. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that God will help us this uh, morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As we seek his kingdom first. I know some of you, God is speaking to you to do certain things in the church. But you are just denying the voice. That is where your blessing lies. We have to seek first the kingdom. Some have started. What are you bringing? What is God speaking to you about on the church? He said that when you bring meat to my house and there is enough meat in my house, then I will visit you. Hallelujah. So let's heed the voice of God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you this morning and keep you under his pavilion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you.